So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Easy Conversations. Thanks a lot to everyone who listened to the last episode featuring the homie Basam Issa. Basam, you absolutely killed it on there, and we look forward to having you on again down the road. So now for episode 87 of Easy Conversations. I'm extremely excited, of course, to be back in the studio virtually with the homie Matt. Say what's up to the people. What's going on, everybody? Hope everyone's having a great day right now. I'm super pumped for tonight's episode because of our two guests and we're going to get into like what uh, what they've been doing and I'm, I'm going to let you introduce them Eric uh, so yeah no super excited to introduce the podcast uh, two fellow podcasters one of whom is Matt and mine's cousin Julia two hosts of their own podcast around the world in 80 murders the homies like I said, our cousin Julia and the homie Alex. Say what's up to the people. What's up to the people? <laughs> Hello, people. Classic. Thanks for having us on, Alex. Pleasure you know, to be here. Eric, oh my gosh. That's all good. Super happy <laughs> to have you both on. And Julia, it's uh, reminiscent of when we had your dad on. He said exactly the same thing. What's up, the people? You so know, I was thinking of that when I said it. I was like, I'm going to check. Ch- uh, channel my inner ally yeah. here. <laughs> I was just gonna say a nice old mom. Wrong with that. Yeah, no, I like it. Nice Easter egg for the listeners too. So yeah, so for this episode, we're gonna be focusing on your podcast. Like I said, around the world in eighty murders. Basically, how you got into podcasting, where you get your ideas from. Um, just talk about general podcasting. Matt and I have a few experiences we can share as well. We'll uh, get into a bunch of stuff, I'm sure. So I think the first place to start though would be to ask you two, Alex and Julia, about how you two linked up and decided to start your own podcast, your own true crime podcast together. So I guess like Alex and I met through my boyfriend, Jake. And so I've known him for like, how long did we know each other? Uh, about two years now. When we started the podcast? Oh, oh when oh, we started yeah, the no, podcast, think, it was about like a year. Yeah, we did a year, a year and a half. Okay. And I knew I wanted to do a podcast. I was, I was working or I was between jobs at the time when we started it. So I was like, working part-time as a waitress and so I had all this time on my hands and I was like I feel like a podcast would be a good hobby to have and like I I knew Alex was super into true crime so we were out like I think like we were out we were out all with a yeah. bunch of uh, your work colleagues yeah we were at like a, a drinks work night and I was like we should start a podcast and then Alex <laughs> just jumped on <laughs> and cool. then he just like set up the uh, the podcast account Yep, all of the accounts, the Spotify, <laughs> the uh, Twitter, the Instagram, everything like that. And then we made the first script and the rest is history, I guess. So I guess if I can ask the same question to you guys, is that like something that we'll do on this episode? Yeah, <laughs> it can be. Eric, take it away. So for, sorry, for the preparation for episodes or how we started the pod? Is that Eric, what you started? Okay, so it's actually like extremely similar to you. It was me and my buddy back in the day. We listened to a lot of the same, like mostly sports podcasts and we're drinking and we're like, we should start a podcast. Like, of course we should start a podcast and like almost identical situation here in the sense that drinks were involved and it was just like, yeah, we should do this. And then we just basically got together. Me and my friend, um, Mart, who is not obviously not really on the pod. He's been on the pod a few times there, but we just did the first episode together, having a few drinks and it was like a good time. And then. I did about 14, maybe a little more than 14 episodes alone. And then like, it was hard to always come up with ideas on my own. And then I reached out to the homie Matt and he had already been on at that point and he That's accepted right. like pretty much, well, you can talk about how it was on your end when I asked you to join. And uh, from there, like it's been us two for like the last few years. Quick, quick question, quick question though, Eric, was Mark supposed to be the, your co-host like going to be on every episode no 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 definitely okay. not because i am okay. i definitely took to the idea more than him it was okay. just like we're just talking about and like like it, could, it would be something fun to do but i definitely like r- drove the bus in like really getting us together okay. to record one episode and even at that it was like my podcast and he was the first guest kind of thing okay. but um yeah no that's a good question though so yeah, so Eric invited me, long story short, like, he's like, let's do a podcast on horror movies. I said, I'm game. I can talk horror films all day. Huge passion for horror films. And that episode went really well, actually. And then, like, I came on another one. And then after that, I think Eric reached out and said, hey, like, I'm getting good feedback. You were good. You want to join? And I'm an avid, avid podcast listener. So 
I kind of wanted to try it myself. And that's my uh, little time to my next question. Like, were you guys avid podcast listeners before starting your own podcast? I was, yes. Uh, me too, yeah. I, I listened okay. to a lot of true crime podcasts before. That's kind of where my interest began in the whole subject of true crime and podcasting. Nice. I feel like it's a natural progression. Like, you, you get into it yourself. Like, when you're at work and you're like, I've run out of pl- playlists to listen to. Like, I need something new. And then you yeah. get into it you're like, I wonder what it would be like to be on the other side. <laughs> Yeah, I I start like I I strictly listen to horror movie podcasts, and like that evolved from just watching YouTube videos. And I was like, this these aren't long enough. I need like five hour, six hour episodes. So that's what got me into it. And then when I I wanted to have my own input listening to these podcasts, like I have my opinion on, mm-hmm. opinion on these movies and thoughts. So, but you guys both share an interest for true crime and dare I like mm-hmm. serial murderers, mur- like crimes basically. So like. What sparked that interest in you, Alex, and in you, Julia? Like, why why this subject? I mean, Alex, maybe you should start with this, because I knew you liked true crime, which is why I thought you'd be a good, like, podcast partner. Oh, that's so a, that's maybe a, you, you take the lead on this one. Yeah, that's a difficult question. I mean, uh, my parents have always been into uh, true crime, mainly the more, like, uh, Kind of, kind of stuff you see on uh, just cable TV, that sort of like forensic files type mm-hmm. thing. So I kind of got into it by watching that with them. And then I just kind of started reading books and eventually moved on to podcasts. Mm-hmm. So it kind of progressed from there. But like, what's, is there any specific thing that intrigues you? Like the, the fact that people got it, like just the incredibleness of the stories or like the yes, macabre, the darkness, the... That's just, that's one of the things that we liked about, like about the way that we do our show is not only do you get to see uh, lots of different uh, kind of, the different kinds of murder that happen around the world, but just kind of the stories leading up to it or the reasons that people do it are interesting. And sometimes it's just like, why? <laughs> like, right. Why or in some cases, how or what. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, we always try to pick cases that have... Like, An interesting are, twist to them. That sometimes. are more than just, like, someone committing a murder. Like, uh, if I can give an example of, like, one of the cases we did, it was, like, this journalist in Macedonia who murdered people so that he could have a story to write about. So it's, <laughs> wow. You know, it's like we find these cases that are kind of, like, larger than, like, life or that are a little bit weird. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's just kind of, like very interesting to read about something different than you might see like every day yeah we so yeah we essentially try not to cover all of the um because in a lot of true crime circles especially in uh some of the uh uh some of the other true crime podcasts they tend to cover all of the same people like right. they will yeah. cover like the biggest ones and then you'll end up with about you don't really stand out as much if you do, if you just do another episode let's say like ted bundy or something because right. there's thousands of episodes on the on him and just no no a lot of people don't want to listen to that anymore mm-hmm. so we decided to do something a little bit different and also gives us an opportunity to learn about some of these really interesting and weird cases from around the world mm-hmm. yeah do you um do you struggle sometimes like to find a different murder like for each country because the concept of your show which is extremely interesting is that it's a different murder set in a different country every episode and how do you go about picking the countries like is there a set formula or you just kind of choose a country and like hey, let's find something a little weird with a twist in here how does that work i think we start by looking at a map usually because okay. yeah. you know based off where the previous country is so uh, okay. we're kind of working our way around the world geographically we started in canada for our first episode as we are in canada then we went over to Europe, and currently we're working our way down through the uh, Middle East into Africa. Then we're going to jump back over to Asia, then uh, Oceania, South America, and for the 80th episode, we're going to reach Canada again. Okay. So it's kind of around the world in 80 nice. murders. Yeah. We get back for the 80th murder. So we kind of start from that, and then we look at what countries are kind of around slash adjacent to uh, the country we did last week, and then we just kind of look through as many sources as we can find so uh there's like the murder the murder wikipedia which is murderpedia mm-hmm. uh, there's... <laughs> haven't had the pleasure of visiting that page yet <laughs> yeah. yeah it's it's not very trustworthy yeah. you know they just kind of make stuff up essentially 
and then all well, this just like the Wikipedia pages, which will list like list of like famous like deaths or murders, okay. and then we go through there and try and find an interesting case. It is kind of hard though, like especially we're doing a an episode for Russia. I don't know if that's the best idea in this climate, but whatever. Yes. <laughs> and um, originally it was Georgia, but uh, yeah, it's like Georgia slash Russia, but it's really hard to find anything. Like there's like no information and like it's hard searching through like foreign news um newspapers to find stuff yeah you have to get so, pretty good at research to do this i we'll see how it goes once we reach like the more obscure countries mm-hmm. i mean we did pretty well in azerbaijan yeah and that was a pretty true. difficult one to begin with are you guys like specifically searching for like a more obscure case because like i i myself like Russia has like a famous serial killer, but uh, you guys are, are you guys aren't oh, trying really? to like go for the most famous, right? Like you guys are no, trying to bring out the more interesting ones, mm-hmm. like, more interesting. like okay. the most famous ones in quite a lot of countries are very big covered. Like Russia's mm-hmm. most famous was uh, Chikatilo. Yeah. yeah, Andre Chikatilo. Like yeah, early podcasts it's... have covered him. It's right. Kind of been like done movies yeah. And, yeah. So we've Fair got so we've got something a bit different there. I mean, Julia found a really good case. Uh, Usually we just have, we just have kind of a Google Doc where we keep all, all of the cases that we think yeah. we should do at some point. There's not really like a process, I guess, to like what we choose. We just kind of look and we're like, oh, this sounds cool. Okay. Yeah, well, like just send send it. somebody send each other a link to it. Like, hey, look at this case I found. What do you think? Yeah. You think this would make for a good episode? Okay. Fair enough. Hey, okay, uh, Julia, question for you. Like, I've known you your pretty much your whole life and used to babysit you, and <laughs> I always knew you had an interest in like horror movies and like. But where does this where does your like fascination come from? Like, where did you develop this in like through reading in school and like what what fascinates you about this this true crime and where did this come from? Okay, I feel like it. It might sound like stupid, but when I was a kid, I was really into Tim Burton. Like, I, okay. I can't explain it. You know how kids have like weird like obsessions that like no one really knows why, but they just do. So that was me. I just loved like The Nightmare Before Christmas. Mm. I loved Halloween. And it became a natural progression to want to watch like horror movies because it's like monsters, scary stuff, I guess. And then, I mean, I wanted to ask you, Matt, as well, actually, because I guess like not all horror fans are necessarily fans of true crime, but there's like similar topics, I guess. Mm-hmm. But I mean, like with true crime, it's different because it's it's real life, so it's kind of like harder to separate yourself, I guess. Because when you're watching a horror movie, it's like, oh, this is just fiction. It's not like these are real tragedies yeah. that people have gone through. Um, but it, I guess, like, because they are related, it's like, I watch a true crime documentary, see if I like it, because it's kind of within the, the realm. Um, and, and, yeah. So what about yourself? I mean, I watch, I love horror films. I can watch any level of, like, intense gore, like, any nothing disturbs me or scares me because i know it's fiction when we get when we start hitting the non-fiction stuff like true crime documentaries that mm-hmm. like netflix excels at doing and those like i have a harder time watching those than any other horror movie mm-hmm. and i don't watch a ton of them because it, it's real it happened it hit they show like true like real pictures of crime scenes and stuff um but what i find fast like i still find it fascinating and what i find fascinating about true crime and horror i just get like like a, I don't know how to describe it. Like almost like a goosebumpy rush type of feeling. Like that's intense. Like it's it's almost taboo. Like I'm not supposed to like it or watch it, but I have a I I, I get drawn towards it. I I react more strongly to this mm-hmm. genre than any other like type of movie uh, yeah. genre. Horror. I, I I get the biggest reactions. Like I, I get stimulated more from watching horror movies. I guess and learning about like dark and macabre stuff and like i'm like in real life I'm like i wouldn't hurt a flyer i'm like <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know i'm not i don't bring i don't it doesn't come out in real life but i just like reading about and mm-hmm. watching horrific things i guess in in my movies um where i think where we're different like me and alex and you me and you julia is like the true crime i can only handle so much and then i'm like ooh. Mm-hmm it's enough like it hits too close to home like i can't watch any war crime footage or any like like any like anything for war crimes like in the middle east or in russia like i i hate watch seeing those pictures and videos i like watching mm-hmm. more like i'm more in the like fiction oriented mm-hmm. where it'll be all special effects and stuff and people are think i'm sick for liking 
Hostel movies or Saw or Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I Spit on Your Grave, all those movies. It's hey, it's it's a movie. I'm allowed it's to like, like it. Um, but, uh, the yeah. stimula- sorry, the stimulation part for like true crime and horror is like when you picture yourself like in those situations mm-hmm. and you're like, what did these people go through? Like I can't mm-hmm. believe this happened. And like, what about the person who did the crimes? Like mm-hmm. what's going on in their yeah. brain? It's just like fascinating. Yeah, like what possesses someone like the, like the BTK killer or Dahmer to like do what they did? It's like it's it's actually insane. Like you could yeah. write case papers on this, right? That's crazy. And um, I'm sure there are like source. There is yeah. source material that you could go through. Like when you do your prep, do you kind of go into that? Like look into the psychology of the killer sometimes, or like uh, we just, just we look do, at those we, angles as well. We do try to. It's just in all of these cases, there just isn't actually that much info about the killer themselves in some gotcha. instances or it's like a lot uh, i think three or four times now the killer has died before trial so mm-hmm. they never get to like the psychoanalysis during trial or anything that would usually be done but we do go into that uh, quite often because in trials they have psychological experts so they do go into the um, we do talk about that mm-hmm. We could actually go more in depth in like just psychological aspects in general. So maybe going forward be a good suggestion. That might, yeah. Not bad. Well, uh, from the one, the episodes I've listened to, you get quite in depth, and like the level of research that you've done for each episode is astounding. And I'm sure, like, I wanted to ask you about how much time does it take to prep for every single episode? Like, oh my gosh. It takes me, it used to take me like hours. Just like, I can imagine. <laughs> back when I was working part time and I had like time like throughout the day, I would just like take like an hour or two like every day, like Monday to Friday, and just like add to the script. Because it's like you have to go through the articles and read them, and then you have right. to organize it into like speaking points and like a timeline. And that like that takes a long time. And I'm sure like Alex, you probably have like thoughts on this too. Yeah, because. Well, well, I the, the main part of the research I do is essentially I get a giant, I uh, get a Google document, and I um, well, I know quite a bit of how to uh, research stuff online um, using various like like keyword searching, various things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and from that, I essentially find every article I can about this subject and put it into a giant word document, and then I pass it off to Julia, and then we kind of go through that and take any information can out there and put it that we need and put it into the um, uh, put it into the script mm-hmm. uh, I mean the, the most research I've done for it, one specific thing was um, in our recent Turkey episode there was a shooting that took place at something they called a chestnut shop which I eventually managed to figure out I managed to go back uh, to the archives of like Turkey's biggest newspaper Harriet I think I managed to find where the candy, the candy shop was, and then I looked up this, what it says on the sign, looked up on Google Maps, and found where it was, because it was very vague about where it was, like, in general. It wouldn't even get us, like, a city where it was, but I managed to find it on Google Maps. Yeah, that's probably the Crazy. most uh, biggest extent we've gone to. Actually, Turkey episode was a lot of that, because it's like, <laughs> uh, the, car, the, the car the killers drove, it was, uh, it was, the articles have been machine translated, so there's issues with that because machine translation isn't perfect. So it turns out the car they were driving, uh, the name for the car translates into English from Turkish as Falcon. But when I looked it up, I couldn't find anything other than a Ford from the 60s. So I had to go backwards, find out what car it was, uh, go back and find the word, Google that, like Turkey, that thing, managed to find out what car it was and put that into the script. I just like the small details. You know, I like that. Going the extra mile. Matt and I normally just watch a couple of movies, write a couple of notes, and come just to talk about them. So. And write a lot of and write a lot of notes is uh that's like a big big overstatement for me, Eric. Like if if that I'll I'll ninety percent of the time I have no notes or just all in my head. But I kind of like I like what we do, Eric, too. The like having the improv aspect. I love that. For sure. Yeah, I still like, you guys have- I write stuff down, like organize my thoughts. Like if yeah. there's key points that I don't want to forget on the spot, cause it is right. easy. It happens to me so often that people like my, by people, I mean like my mom and my bro who say like, Oh, I can't believe you didn't say this about the movie or whatever. It's like, yeah, it's easy to forget stuff when you're talking like on the fly. And even though it's an obvious point, maybe if you don't write it down, you know, it's easy to forget. So it is good to prepare well conversation. Just quickly. 
like was it always meant to be scripted julia and alex like was that your intention uh, from the start when creating yeah. the podcast okay so it's because the podcast itself contains a lot of factual information right. that we couldn't remember it's more like a story right where yeah, it's like that, the podcast is like just a conversation so it's like we have to just like we're like presenting information because there'll be a bunch why, like you need like a script for it yeah there'll be a bunch of events names dates like places that sort of thing so you need to keep them you don't want to mix them up and get them wrong so yeah. we have to at least relatively scripted i mean we have kind of information points and then we kind of do a back yeah. and forth in between yeah, I list. I list uh, the very first episode. I listened to episode one. That yeah. that was my biggest takeaway. Was like, oh, I was just laying down to bed. And it was like listening to a story with a couple interjections, and was like, it was cool hearing your voice, Julia, because you know yeah, I've I known agree. you so like you're yeah, so like long, and it was like, oh, this is so cool. Yeah, I agree. 100%. Um, and it's very detailed. You're right, very detailed. I like you learn a lot, and then when I started drifting off the soup, so I like pause it for another day, but like. <laughs> You have to, like, I have to be, pay attention because I'll... It's true. Like, podcasts yeah. like that, you have to pay attention. Yeah. Mm. It's like, you'll miss stuff. Yeah, well, you might, yeah, you might miss the entire, like, the entire crime bit of the case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I ain't throwing this podcast on at the gym, you know? Like, it has to be, like, a, your focus yeah. and the zone yeah. and... If you're doing something mundane at work and it's, like, yeah. in depth today. Yeah. yeah. Driving's perfect. Like, uh, in the car, yeah. your podcast is perfect. Um, I'm very far behind, but I mean, now I have 45 minute drives to work, so catch up time. Um, nice. <laughs> where, yeah, true. Bef- before your first episode came out or before you guys recorded your first episode, were there any like expectations you guys had or like you thought it was going to be super easy versus like what the reality like was mm-hmm. it Great as you imagine imagined it in your head or was it t- completely different from mm-hmm. what you thought like actually producing the podcast? I remember it just out. feeling so awkward, like that first time we hit the record, because it's like, okay, and, oh my gosh, what do I say? Mm. Like, <laughs> like we're, are we gonna just go back and forth with points, or like, yeah. do we have like an intro kind of bit that we do? Like, did we even um, start splits? Did we even have the intro back in the first episode? I don't. Think or did we, we come did, up to with? To be honest, I think we just like. Actually, I think, <laughs> I, I think we did, but I think we spent about half an hour beforehand trying to figure out how to open the episode because we were like we had the information starting from the beginning of the story but it's like what do we say to introduce it Mm -hmm. and like there wasn't that much banter in the first episode i think so it's mostly like around the fourth episode where i started to feel like comfortable and it's like okay like i don't know you kind of get used to it and for sure for sure was it the same for you guys? Yeah, like you get way more comfortable as you go along. And like now we're 87 deep. So it's pretty much second nature. Like intro is down pat. Don't even think about it. It's just muscle memory kicks in. And just like banter as well. Like we have Matt and I now like already had a close relationship. And now like even closer because of doing the pod. Like every two weeks minimum we're doing one. So it's pretty easy to just get in that rhythm. But yeah, at first it was... At, at, by, at first, I mean, like, for a long time, it was still nerve-wracking, like, getting a little nervous before every pod. Still am sometimes, honestly, like, mm-hmm. but that, I, th- I think that's a good sign, like, to be a little, little nervous because that means you're doing something that you're, like, passionate about and that you don't want to mess up. So, normally, that means you bring your A game. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, listening to yourself at first is always tough. Like, I'm pretty used to it now there, but at first, like, you just cringe at what you say yeah exactly it's yeah. just like oh turn this off <laughs> yeah for sure yeah and i don't know about you guys but i feel like i've gotten like like funnier as the episodes go on it's like you're trying to nice. force jokes the first episode because they're like oh my gosh like i need to be likable <laughs> to this but then as you go you get more natural and you kind of like come up with things to say like more easy i guess yeah no that's completely normal um my very first episode, I thought about it all day at work. I was so nervous. Got to Eric's house. He was living in, yeah, you were in Avalon, I think, at the yeah, time. Yeah. I was so nervous, guys. I was, and then, but then Eric made it so, like, as soon as he started talking and introduced me, I was like, ah. Oh. And we were talking about the thing I know, like, probably the most, like, super comfortable talking about horror movies. Like, I'm very, yeah. Um, and then when the episode ended in like in a flash, like I'm like, oh, we're already done. So that that helped. Like having a subject matter that you like mm-hmm. is key. Mm-hmm. But as the as the more I've been doing it with Eric, it's just like I the only part I get nervous about is 
sometimes like I, I don't arch- articulate what I want to say perfectly or find the I can have a trouble finding the words sometimes. And maybe that comes from working like manually and not like using my brain to work. And I don't know. I'm, I just sometimes, well, I stress out about like pronouncing words or whatever or speaking. So that part I'm nervous about, but not what we're talking about more like, how am I going to communicate, which is kind of silly of me, yeah. but. I feel that way too. Like when I'm listening to other podcasts and they're like, go, the, the hosts are just going so smoothly and they're yeah. like hilarious and yeah. like everything's landing. And it's like, oh my gosh, like how do words like happen? Right. <laughs> yeah, that just illustrates how I feel about that. <laughs> and Eric, Eric, to like, what I listen to it, the episode, like before I was co-host, I listened to every episode and I was like, Eric is, you're very good, Eric. Like you're very natural. Like, you're just a very good speaker right and I, I bet you you speak at your job right you like you you train people and that's what you do like that was very evident and I was like oh crap like I gotta like I gotta at least go like close to Eric's level of like comfort and ease and try to make it natural too so it's not one of my strengths right so but I think I've improved a lot um, yeah yeah no, it's a, like I said, like it's still something I get nervous doing as well. And that yeah, listening to, I listen to podcasts constantly all day, like walking, doing like I'm making supper alone dishes and always envying yeah. other people, like quick wittedness. Like that's why I got to take write notes down. Like if you think I'm funny sometimes it's because I wrote that joke down, but uh, no, I'm just kidding. But in all seriousness, no, it's a, it's a really good time. And I think it's a great hobby, like for Matt and I to uh, like both of us, like just practice our uh, like yeah communication and uh get our ideas like, out there and stuff yeah like i truly believe listening to podcasts makes you smarter you're acquire you're acquiring knowledge mm-hmm. if anything on just like and then and then making one producing one like we both do mm-hmm. or i mean eric produces it but anyway um, that like makes you smarter too and that's why i think like i'll i always look forward to doing it because i know like i I'm gonna i'm gonna learn something i love learning I learn stuff mm-hmm. every day and I just love, and you're, you guys is around the world. Navy murders is like, that's all brand new information mm-hmm. for me. So it's yeah. very educational, interesting and entertaining. Um, I definitely feel like I learn stuff. Like when I'm writing the scripts, just like yeah. about the countries. Cause we started doing like a segment before, like the actual case where we just talk yeah. about the country itself. So it's like, I now know like these capital cities of like random countries right. What's, like, the, uh, what's the capital of Azerbaijan? Oh my god. No! <laughs> oh. That was your last episode. You just right? put I on the know. spot and. Yep. Yeah, okay, I got it. You got it. Let's go. I know. And would, would, would um, you know that at all? I, I wouldn't have known that if it wasn't for the podcast. So. I, I feel like, I mean, I don't know how useful that information is. Yeah, it but, might help in a pub I mean, quiz. It's like, yeah, oh, and, classic Tuesday trivia comes in handy. Yeah, you never yeah. know. <laughs> Um, what what about your familiarity with like toxicology and all that? Like, does that come strictly from either your research or like watching true crime documentaries, or do you also like like I said, just research a lot of that before you do your episodes? Because you sound like you know what you're talking about when it comes to all the drugs and all that. Like, I'm just going way over my head. Like, I don't know anything about this stuff, but it sounds very interesting. It comes mostly from the research. However, like, I did do my undergrad in chemical engineering, so, like, there's some, like, terms that are kind of familiar to me. (laughs) Not, like, I'm not, like, the expert, though, because I feel like I graduated and then it all just went out my my head. But it is kind of, like, having that background, I guess, is, like, oh, yeah, okay, I know what, like, this compound is, or, like, I know what this, um, like, process that they're describing here when it comes to, like, creating this compound, I guess. Right. Um, that yeah, I, I did remember you did study chemical engineering, so I was like, okay, that that makes sense. Um, oh, I'm just gonna bring something back. Like I should have thought of this at the start, but like Alex, I know nothing about you, and Julia, I know like obviously I know more about you than Alex, but like, can you wanna just so the audience gets to know you more? Like, can you guys like maybe we'll do like a quick rapid fire like name me like what are your interests outside of the podcasting? Like, what are some of the movies you like to watch? Like, what are your favorite movies? What currently, uh, current uh, books you're reading? Like, shoot me some book recommendation, maybe not book recommendation, but what's a book that like you can say your favorite? Um, what do you guys like to do for fun? Like outside of podcasting or 
watching okay. TV or books or just like something about yourself. Cause like, yeah, Alex, I know nothing about you and I'd like to know more. Why don't you go first Alex? Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, which one should I answer first? Movies. Like, um, your, what's your top three? Uh, my, okay. My favorite movie is uh, Back, to, Back to the Future 3. Nice. The, third one, the the unpopular choice. Never seen. Well, it. it's still good. It's as close as the trilogy. And also, I enjoy I enjoy westerns as well. So that's where that comes in. Nice. Uh, uh, my next favorite one is. It's very hard. I like uh, Army of Darkness. Oh. And Red uh, Pig Man. And uh, what's the other one? Uh, I'm suddenly blank. It's like when somebody asks you, like, what's your favorite color? You can't it's a, think of it. It's a thinker. Um, I, I, you can just rattle them off, Alex. If it's more than one movie left, just, like, name ten if you want. Oh, no, that's way too much. <laughs> just uh, rattle them off. Okay. Say, for a few dollars more as well, is probably Ooh, my favorite question. The middle one in the trilogy. Yes. I like it. I, I, well, I've actually never seen the I've never seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. I've been being too much and never got wrapped to it. Oh, you need to get on that right now. I know. I just need to find three hours. True. <laughs> good point. At some point, I need to find three hours, and also I need to find another nine hours for Lord of the Rings. Yeah. As people, you've people never seen people it. People keep telling me I need to watch it, and I will. You've never seen it? Nope. I, there's a lot <laughs> of films I've never seen. I've never seen Star Wars. I've never seen. Uh, I've seen. I basically I've just I've just never seen a lot of films really. Like I saw Lion King for the first time two months ago. Uh, I just didn't. My parents just didn't show me any films growing up really. It's all good, Alex. I, I, we, we've all got those yeah. movies. Like people come at me all the time for not having seen a few movies. It, nothing's wrong with that. Don't worry about it. I, I envy you, Alex, because I That's would true. kill to see Lord of the Rings again for the first time. That's like true. that experience. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. I just need to find some time when I've got nine hours free. What are some of the books that you like to read? Are you like a fiction guy, nonfiction? Um, I'm mostly like uh, I mostly like nonfiction, mostly uh, history and nice. well, obviously true crime. But we'll we probably discuss that a bit right. at length. Um, I like I like history quite a lot. Um, I'm, currently, I'm currently reading a book on the uh, American. Uh, the American-Mexico uh, war around the uh, turn of the 19th century, or 20th century, sorry, no, 19th and 20th. Uh, so I'm reading all about like the Mexican Revolution, that sort of thing from that era. Uh, that's one of the ones I'm reading at the moment. I'm also reading another book about um, the, uh, well, it's, te it's technically true crime, but it's also history, because it's um, a book called Tokyo Vice, which is an, Amer an American reporter kind of, Goes to goes to uh, Tokyo and essentially works with their kind of uh, vice the vice squad in their uh, police department and gets to like write about like the underworld of uh, Tokyo, so like the Kusa, all sorts of stuff like that. That is cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Did you study like history in post secondary studies or like? Yes, I did. I actually minored in history. Nice. I majored in computer science, minored in history. Nice. Excellent. Which everybody's told me is a weird combination. No, it's a, that's a sweet combo platter. I like it. Yep. It's a well-rounded. Yeah, degree. good day yeah, for a, a real renaissance, man. <laughs> do you like, do you, do you do any sports or any other hobbies other than true crime? Uh, yeah, I like to, um, well, I'm a, pro, I'm a programmer by trade, so I do a bit of that on the side. Nice. I do a bit of uh, video game modding, uh, yeah. play I play video games. I'm starting to get into uh, woodworking, and um, yeah, I also uh, collect records as well. Oh, awesome! Bit of it. I like that. What's your favorite uh, f favorite musician or artist or band? Basically, favorites. Uh, my favorite band would be the Ram the Ramones. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Nice. Not, not okay. the best technically, but they make the ca catchiest music. Hey, isn't your favorite the best? Shouldn't your favorite be the best? Like, no, I don't like, think musical proficiency has to be the number one thing in uh, music. Okay. Because that's well, if, if you go into the field, of, especially if you, well, I'm a big fan of punk rock. So, okay, in their musical proficiency is the thing. It's more about the way it makes you feel, the emotions, generally. Mm -hmm. 
What about you, Julia? What do, what do you have for me? Listen, dealer's you choice. Want. Just throw them in there. Movies, yeah, books, sorry. anything. I already mentioned Nightmare Before Christmas. That was like my defining movie as a kid for whatever reason. Um, it's very mainstream, but I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan, as you guys yeah. both know. Mm-hmm. If you guys ever do another Lord of the Rings trivia yeah. episode, absolutely, mm-hmm. I would like to go. Should do that. Um, That's a good I've, idea. I've read all three books and watched the movies, and I feel like the movies are better. Yeah, I agree, actually. I read the books for the first time this year, and I thought the movies were better. You just really have to like pay attention to the books. There's so many songs and like... Not a fan of the songs. Yeah. Characters that are like, that just go on like cite poems for like pages and yep. it's like that, that must be a very rare opinion because I, I, it's very rare that you hear somebody say that yeah. the book is better or the movie is better than the book mostly I mean, it's the other way around i mean like you, you have to have an appreciation for the book but like the movies are just question so for you julia have you did you read the books after you saw, had already seen the movies yes or? and thank god i did because i feel like i would not have been able to understand what was going on yeah i agree i feel like but maybe we're blinded by our preconceived notions of how much we love the movies and then going into the books like the extra stuff we maybe weren't a fan of i don't know i don't want to speak for you here there but that's kind of how it was for me and i just i like that they expanded a lot actually in the movies they made the fellowship characters in my opinion more fleshed out in the movies which is typically like alex said actually not the case because in books you have so much more time to develop characters Mm -hmm. I feel like they did a better job in the movies than the books. But I stand by your take. <laughs> I, it's funny because, like, I always, like, like my dad and, like, I guess, like, maybe your parents, too, like, read the books before the movies came out. And I'm always, like, how did, like, how are there so many fans of these books, like, before the movies? It's, like, I wonder, like, what their experience was like versus, True. like, people today who saw the movies first. There were less fantasy books back then, so they only had, like, this was, like, the staple, but now so much more has come out, and it's better than Lord of the Rings, if that's super, like, heresy to say, like, like, some people swear Lord of the, Lord of the Rings' greatest fantasy trilogy ever written, right, but mm. it's very dated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I guess they read, like, 30 pages on, like, descriptions of forests and stuff, like, there's, in chapter, there's a chapter in the first book, it's, like, the old forest, it's called, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, Super pointless, right, Eric? Something yep. like that. Tom yeah. Bombadil or whatever his name is. Right. There. Glad they there. omitted him <laughs> from the movies. Do you read yeah, most? Sorry, I guess most modern fantasy is kind of built on the back of Lord of the Rings, though. Like, didn't they create? Didn't they create most of like the kind of types of characters that you'd have, like the orcs? And wait, didn't didn't he like create the concept of the orc essentially? I think so. I I want to say yes. It's kind of like kind of like set the standard of like what the kind of oh essentially the standard class like groups or classes or species would be in like a fantasy setting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. got the blueprints down. Yeah. Yeah. Do you read nonfiction, Julia? Not as much, to be honest. I'm mostly just a fiction girl. Um, I'm actually in a book club with like two of my friends from work. And cool. we haven't read a book in a while, actually, um, just because, like, one of them has been going through something. But mm-hmm. we've been, I guess, like, similar concept as to the podcast, but, like, picking books that are from outside of Canada. So, like, okay. kind of, it's interesting. It's, like, stuff that you might not have, like, thought to have read or even, like, seen at bookstores. Actually, I have a or, question for you, Julian. And it's a well-documented thing and actually ties perfectly into what we're, the topic of our episode today. Have you happened to read in your book club the iconic novel Crime and Punishment? And if so, were you able to complete this novel? Because I could not, for the life of me, finish this book. I just couldn't get into it. Like 400 <laughs> pages in, and I'd stopped reading it. I have not read the Crime Okay. And <laughs> I feel like that's a hot take. That, anyways. Is that... Okay, wait, crime and punishment. That's, that's like uh, Tolstoy, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, like no, Fedor and. Oh, right? Dostoevsky, no. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think we read more like fictional stories. Okay, okay. Cultures. But no, I have not. Alex, have you read it? No, because I heard how horrible it was, to how ridiculously long and painful it is. Yeah. To read. It's a, it was a grind. I decided to prepare myself that torture. <laughs> 
Can I ask why you're choosing to read this there? Well, I, it's been a while that I actually shelved it. Like, it, it was just recommended to me that it's like a classic novel and like that it, it should be read, you know. I've read a lot of those books that you should read just because they're literary breakthroughs but yeah just I tried I gave it my all I talked about it like five times on the pod and just couldn't power through it it was just horrible and actually a lot of people I spoke to felt similarly about it that they thought it was a slog to get through hmm. I've moved that on to better an interesting things question like are these classics classics only because every like pretentious person and professor is saying yeah Perhaps. yeah it's a classic and then you actually read it or watch the movie or the book or read the book and you're like oh why it's only a classic because everyone said it was, but no one actually enjoys it or finds it entertaining. I've always, I, that's like a topic of mine of like, mm-hmm. should it actually, like, what's the merit? Like where, where does, who branded it a classic and why is it still a classic now? Sometimes stuff gets dated. Like I'm sure there's a lot of literature that, you know, like t- times have changed right in the 21st century and it's like, Ooh, we can't, it's no longer a classic. Um, especially yeah. with movies there's like some early examples of like movies that are deemed racist now that aren't classics anymore but they were at the time right um on the subject of crime and punishment i think it's mainly because it's kind of especially from the era it's from i well i took russian history at university yeah. and i think it is because it's mainly emblematic of the kind of pre, the pre-soviet union era of russia ah. okay might actually be a good case study for your pod, perhaps. I'd recommend it for your book club as well, Julia, if you want to give it a go and just see what you think. And maybe you're looking at it from a different lens, than, with a different lens than myself. So maybe there would be something to appreciate, but for me, it just didn't do it. I'm not sure how my book club members... <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> they kick you out of book club. Yeah. <laughs> throwing copies of it at you and it would hurt because it's a thick book oh, yeah it's a brick <laughs> it's a tome are you guys more f- um, okay back to your podcast around the world maybe murders when you have like you pick your country and you have like three choices you've read like three different cases do you go mm. for the one with the more the actual acts and murders like the grisliness do you, the fascination there or do you like more like the, the setup do you like like the journey or the destination more I think the journey. I think the journey, the journey as well. Sometimes there'll be interesting things about them themselves. Mainly, it's about who the who the murderer is. Yeah, and it's also or how they like, do it. Kind of like we go through their life, because so then it's like it's more the journey, I guess, because it's like okay, like what what led them to this, this person? Point. Like what what life choices did they make, or what experiences did they have that are kind of like larger than life, or just like unique that kind of led them to yeah exactly. yeah yeah what led them to this point in their life where they deemed that murder was necessary for some reason mm-hmm. like yeah i think definitely about the journey then like in our first episode we cover a woman who didn't commit her first murder until she was like 56 or something right and that was by drugging her husband and then running him over with mm. the car with their car yeah, so yeah it's more about like iconic moments that, her that i guess led her to that yeah that she, interesting to us because she lived an interesting life beforehand mm-hmm. and after because she kept she got out of prison after that then moved around used fake names mm-hmm. uh, essentially poisoned her two or three more people one of them one or two of them died mm-hmm. and um essentially she got away with it because she was essentially a black widow yeah. and um yeah she kept doing that up until from like 1992 until 2014 i think was the last one that she did it's crazy. And she's still currently living, she's free and living to this day in Halifax. Insane. Just shuffling around the country, getting away with it scotch free. 88 years old, I think, or something. She's on a run. That's um, great. So you're not just going for like the ghastly crime scenes and like the no, no. file. And... We, we, don't, we don't enjoy the gore part of it. The murder mm. is kind of, it's there, but it's not the main part of the right. podcast. Yeah. Despite the name, it's kind of, Everything around it is the more interesting part of it, we believe. I guess that's, like, a good distinction between, like, horror movies, too, where it's, like, that's kind of, like, you're watching that for, like, the goriness, like, in some films, like, not all of the horror movies, whereas, like, with true crimes, it's, like, a real thing that happened. It's more like, okay, let's look at the psychology, but, like, not that we're explicitly doing that, but it's more, like, 
the undertone is more the psychology. Yeah, it's more the story of just everything that happened around this. It's just kind of, it's built around the murder, but it's not specifically just about the murder. Mm -hmm. There's so much more stuff that happens around the murder that's actually more interesting, at least that we believe, Mm -hmm. than the murder itself. Because there's the killer's life, what led them to that is Mm -hmm. one of the things that we find interesting. And yeah, what drove them to do that, why they thought that was a thing they needed to do. And then the the, aftermath. Yeah, the aftermath, if if they're able to keep going or if they get caught. That was... Yeah, sorry, go ahead, Alex. And some of our episodes are still developing. I mean, in a lot of instances, the killer is, the killers are dead, but mm. for example, earlier this week, uh, from the uh, uh, the uh, killer, well, the alleged possible killer, it's, it's kind of dubious there if he actually did it or not, but a guy who's involved in the Monaco, in our Monaco case, I think episode nine, he's currently on the run after stealing two dogs. Yeah, that's very wow. cool. And yeah, and he was the guy who we th- who we thought was innocent, because mostly it seemed to be due to corruption of the authorities there that led to the deaths that happened in that episode. But he was blamed for them, and he may or may not have been responsible for them. That was my fir- my first impression of your podcast. Like the first time I listened, first five minutes was. Oh, they're actually going to go in the backstory and provide a lot of information, mm-hmm. and I like that actually. Yeah, so. Same good like good call like doing that because it was like a great setup build like i'm like okay well i looked at the length and i'm like okay they're not just gonna pop start right in with the murders right mm-hmm. so no i like that it's like uh like a like a, what you said it's like listening to a story a book yeah. it's mm-hmm. it's um yeah yeah I, there's a lo- go ahead oh, sorry. sorry sorry you okay. i was just gonna say there's like two types of podcasts I listen to and one of them is more like story orientated like horror stories like um but like mine are all like fiction like the fiction aspect and then then and then I have like more like the podcast where people can just banter and bullshit for like they just talk about everyday things and then we'll do a movie review but you guys is like you guys stick to your guns and present this story this case and Mm -hmm. it's really interesting um yeah yeah, mostly our format is pretty set in that we have a, generally a chronological story. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we've only deviated from that twice uh, because there was an episode which was uh, about the literary killer, which we kind of framed it like a story, which is we kind of covered the discovery of the murder victim first, and then we kind of, kind of took you through the story of it. So it's like the police find out who the victim is, and then the police work to trace who the murderer is, and when we get the murderer's name, we then cover the like the life of the murderer once they find it out. So we kind of made it a bit more lit- literary in that way. I guess it depends on like the case we do. Like if it lends itself that way, like if the information right. was presented in that way, like to the actual people involved. Yeah. Then there's our one pit stop episode, which is an ex- experiment that we tried that we weren't 100 percent happy with, so we decided it wasn't worth uh, keeping up with. Yeah, we tried it. We tried out a bonus episode once where it was like we went through like properties where murders took place that are still up and like up for sale, and like I don't know, just it was yeah, it was kind like, of like, how a, that's affected. It was a curiosity. Like, yeah, it was kind of, um, cool I got that when I was hearing about. I kind of thought about that when I was um, I was in I was in Toronto. Oh no, it wasn't Toronto. Yeah, it was Toronto. It was Toronto, and I was uh, listening to a podcast, and they were talking about how um, this murder had happened in Toronto. And I actually looked at the place where it was, and the place was still standing. And that kind of made me think, I wonder what other ones are standing, or people mm. still living in. And there's loads of them. Some of them are even up to sale this day, to this day. Yeah, so like um, when I, I mentioned the BTK killer earlier. We found one of the houses where uh, four pe- where he killed four people. That house is still for sale. And, and the pictures don't look like... Uh, it looks, like a, it looks like a horror that. movie set. It, it lo- like It's just like, it's incredibly dark, incredibly bleak. The pictures are blurry. And it, the house is for sale for about 200,000 less than every other house. I'm going to say, were. the resale about, value can't be too high on that place. No, it's like the house is worth like... The, the, like the average in the neighborhood is like two hundred fifty thousand, and their that house is for fifty thousand. Mm. Still, nobody's bought it because of what happened there. 
you think at that point they just tear it down. Yeah. Question for all three. Would you guys ever consider living in a house where a ghastly murder took place? No. <laughs> no. It's a bad omen. And yeah, maybe, hey, in this hard. market, like this housing crisis we're in, <laughs> sure, $200,000 cheaper, let's go, actually. <laughs> what about you, Alex? Would you would you live in there? Um, that house, no. But like, like any other house? houses where it's just like a regular, like, because that, that's kind of like an irregular kind of murder, because that's an True. entire family. That's, yeah. different from, that's kind of different from just like, say, husband murders wife or something, just kind of. It's a weird distinction to make, but it's kind of... I feel like there's something different there. Between so it depends. You know For what? you guys, it depends. But even, even still, I wouldn't, me, feel, even still, even hard still, no. I wouldn't feel great about it. I'd still feel... It would still kind of... It would linger in the back of your mind. Actually, True. it's interesting that you asked that, Matt, because one of the properties we looked at was John Wayne Gacy's house, where he killed, I think, 30 people. <laughs> and they actually were advertising the fact that John Wayne Gacy killed people there as if it was like a haunted house. Wow. Oh, that, that was and the best so thing. so it was kind of like, I don't think that's the angle. But... Yeah, we were looking at the, uh, was it <laughs> like, Realtor? It was like Realtor.com. And we were going through all the pictures, because what they did was, because he had people under his house, they dug out all the soil, replaced it, and built a new house on top of it. So they tried to make it a new house, but then you go through like the 90 or so photos and say around like 56, there's two pictures of John Wayne Gacy in like the whole clown yeah, makeup. It's very real. That's messed real, up. Very, very weird. Very not the move on the, uh, the realtor's part. Yeah, so like yeah. some people view that as like a historical artifact i guess you can always go museum. in this case it added value to the house like it's going for two hundred thousand dollars more than the other houses because of that who knows reverse effect yeah. but like weird, really weird true crime fans out there yeah. i mean the, we, the, value. the weirdest instance we had was the um uh house where uh, charles manson's followers killed uh sharon tate oh because mm. well, that was like a mansion yeah, because that's a mansion in the Hollywood Hills. Right. So what they did was yeah. they tore it down, dug out all of the dirt from the property, replaced it, and then built the largest house I've ever seen on it. It was like 22,000 square feet. Mm. And it's owned by like the creator of Full House now. Mm. Oh, I don't remember those names. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. There's, um, yeah, it's just... That was an experiment we tried... We couldn't really think of anything else to go after that. We did have a couple ideas, but we just kind of canned them because we realized we preferred the regular format more. Mm -hmm. Sp speaking of these, like, people's fast, like, the them advertising John Wayne Gacy's house, like, what is it with um, people's fascination with serial killers? Like, I know, like, we're interested in a more, like, we want to like know like the psychology and the human aspect, but like what are what's with these crazy fans that write fan mail to Gacy in jail and people that would like like Ted Bundy's fans, like you know like a bunch of and and Charles Manson's like fan, like why do people why are what do you think is the reason people are obsessed with serial killers, but like the people that are going over the top and they go overboard, like what do you think it is? It's these people, is it these serial killers like did something that not many people are going to do in this life and get it's the fame and like what are your thoughts on all that like fascination with superhero uh, super kill uh, serial killers borderlining well, on like mania in a crazy way i i would say that it's kind of like there's there's two different levels let's say there's kind of like the people who are a little bit too into it as just like a fan of it it's like yep. say people who like buy the relatively tacky say like jeffrey dharma t-shirts like i eat guys like you for breakfast i see that at a t-shirt on red bubble the other day yeah that's or it's, it's um, a pass for me or if, you go, or if you go to people who are close to it like say the people who like end up writing to or in some cases even marrying serial killers while they're in prison i mean there's people who there's i think one woman who married uh or married a serial killer while he was in prison divorced him and then married another serial killer who, who had been killing after him so i'm assuming that's more of just kind of uh mental health for mental health mm. issues there or some kind of either i can fix him type of thing or maybe a kind of i don't know it's kind of a thing that most people i guess there must be something that makes sense to them about it that most people wouldn't understand is what i'm going for what do you think maybe they've had a fantasy of doing the same but could never go ahead with it but 
these serial killers have actually lived out their fantasies or like dark thoughts they've actually gone ahead and like done what these other sick people have always wanted to do right yeah yeah that could be a good point yeah, good. i think maybe yeah. like what you said earlier about like these people have done something so like like not to say different but just something so like horrible and like mm-hmm. something that doesn't happen in civil society yeah. maybe it just like kind of draws the attention of like maybe people who a like aren't mentally well and so it's like if that goes unchecked then it kind of manifests itself like into this like admiration or obsession for these people yeah yeah i think you've all said it perfectly i think they're like the people who are writing to other serial killers in prison i want to say are all like-minded individual who like you said matt either have dreamt about doing these kind of things never been able to carry them out and respect the people who have done those things but i i want to go out i'm not going to go out on a limb here and say that i don't think people like the four of us here would go out and write letters to serial killers and they just to engage no. in any sort of dialogue with them, even if it's just one way, like we're not seeking them out, right? No. So no. now the only kind of correspondence I would understand with them is from more of like a professional angle. So say too. like research. Yeah. Like if um say if somebody's doing research for a book or something. Mm. Um because well. in some cases that's how we know about a lot of the crimes or anything like that, is because because they because like authors wrote letters or interviewed them. So it's kind of that's really the only correspondence that sh- probably should be done with them essentially. But the yeah, but like the either like the weird fan worship of some some people like are like weird fans of serial killers, which is kind of a concerning thing. Yeah, is like why this person has done such heinous things that nobody should even want to like them or even want anything to do with them. But people like them Mm -hmm. in some instances or some people even i mean i can understand to an extent maybe like some of them have had bad childhoods and you can empathize with that but the moment they kill someone just that doesn't matter because there's plenty of people who've had horrible much worse childhoods than some serial killers who haven't done any of that at all and so it's not just for it has it ever happened to you guys where like it's happened to me i'm having a conversation with a co-worker about could be like the the Night Stalker documentary on Netflix about Richard Ramirez, where it's like we're just we're like we're t- we're going in detail, and then someone's like, "You guys are weird for liking that," or we you we you you do get judged hard if you have an mm-hmm. interest in this. In my opinion, it's happened to me. I'm guessing it's happened to you. Maybe you guys can I'm, like, I has it happened to you guys where it's been like a rent uh, a friend's been like, "Why do you guys like that dark stuff?" or get judged really unfairly? Yes. I feel like my yeah. parents judge me. I feel like, I feel like, well, my parents don't, my parents refuse to listen to the podcast, even though they like it. Yeah, my friends. dad refuses to listen to it. And, really? And most of my friends, either, they, you know, most of my friends won't listen to it either. Hmm. Um, but I can't really recall, like, a specific scenario where, like, someone who wasn't, like, a family member was, like, like, judged me explicitly for it. Yeah, I, I don't know. You okay. know, Gamma Matt tunes in <laughs> every <laughs> week. <laughs> it's like, you do a podcast. It's like, oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Like, that sort of thing. But then, yeah. What was that, Eric? Sorry? Sorry. I said, you know, Gamma Matt tunes in every week. Just. Was she? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh my gosh. Oh. Okay, yeah. I have like a heart attack for a moment. Gotta revise the, the stuff I say on the episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about I, I mean, I definitely get judged hard for liking horror movies because. It's like they say about jazz, like you, you either get it or you don't. And those mm. who like get it, like think it's the greatest thing ever. Like that's with me with horror movies. I just, I can't think the other way. I can't see their side of thinking they're stupid. I, I just can't. So and same like, with the, sorry, go ahead, Matt. Yeah, you know, like true crime fascination is in the same boat, really. Like mm. I find that stuff fascinating, like, but then there's the people on the other side of the spe- spectrum. Like I, there's a lot of people that can never listen to your podcast, right? Like you said, your pen, yeah. like your dad, it's just too, I guess, morbid for them or they don't want to stay away yeah. from that. So um, yeah. I can appreciate that. True crime is not, it's not for everyone. And we yeah. appreciate that. Don't try and push it on anybody. If they're not interested in it, then don't talk to them about it. That's true. You know, yeah. You don't have to try and force your interest on someone. Will you, like, defend it, though, Alex? Like, will you go to bat for, like, if someone's, like, why do you, like, you will stand up for your, um, 
Yeah, if they start hating, okay, good. Yeah, I yeah. think there are valid this. reasons to kind of, I, I wouldn't say enjoy, I guess enjoy, but kind of be interested in because you get enjoyment from being interested in something. It's kind of interesting just to kind of learn about, as I said, the kind of thing that we focus on more is the story of it. Because mm-hmm. some of the stories are, fasc- it's just fascinating, essentially. Mm. It's just like how, like in some cases, it's how could they get away from this dog? Or in unfortunately, a lot of cases, it's how could the police be so inept? Right. As to yeah, fail, have, yeah. as to fail to catch this person after seven times. Exactly. You guys have the whole investig investigation angle too, which is super fascinating. And the chronologic order is like keeps everything. It's easy to follow. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, like you guys have, it's way more than just ghastly murders it's the whole story being told and i that's my argument for horror movies all the time people just oh it's jump scares it's serial it's the killer like teleporting to the next victim and like they're running and he's walking and then they just how did he catch up to that person it's like that's just such a stereotype and like i hate that i have to keep defending my like oh there's no good horror movies well you've only seen the one percent that comes out of the theater every year so like yeah I, i i hear the struggle it's it's not uh I'm going to keep fighting the good fight and like, it's okay to be like interested in these things. It's more, it's more than just what's on the surface. Mm-hmm. Um, since you've started your podcast, podcast actually, since you've started your podcast, would you say that you've ta- like slowed down your intake of true crime content, like documentaries or movies? Has that affected yeah. it? Yes. Like, have you, yeah. Okay. I'm just like, more time like doing my own research for the episodes now yes yes like i haven't seen any of the netflix true crime ones that came out since uh well we took i think we took a week off over december so i think that's the last time i watched any mm. and like i feel like at the end of the day i just want to watch something light <laughs> yeah like to balance it out yeah know? like or something that's at least not true crime related because like i've had enough of this now <laughs> i've been searching this for like three or four hours yeah, I, it's like i need I'll, to do something different <laughs> i'll watch parks and rec or something like that yes. or even game of thrones jeez that's less gory than some, <laughs> some of the things actually <laughs> awesome yeah and you guys do a with um, it's weekly, right? No, it's bi-weekly or it weekly? It used to be weekly, but um, uh, sk- that we've had to change the schedule as Julie has got a full-time job now, yes. and I was always working a full-time job, but I moved to a position where I have to do a lot more work, and I have to work overtime sometimes, mm. so I have less time, and Julie has less time, so we had to, we managed to keep up the, we, yeah, we, mm. We actually keep it up for about two weeks doing the weekly episodes when so. both of us were working full time. Yeah. But it got to the point where our episodes were like being finished either on Thursday itself, which it usually releases at 8 a.m. on a Thursday morning, okay. uh, Ottawa time. But um, at some point, sometimes it wouldn't get released till like 10 p.m. that on Thursday night, or sometimes mm-hmm. we'd miss the, the Thursday entirely. So we decided to move it to every two weeks because. It was just too much to research, edit, research, write, yeah. script, uh, record, edit, and upload in time. No, it's a, it's a grind for sure. And even, well, first of all, congratulations, Julian, full-time job. It's awesome. And did you find, even when you had more free time, did you find the weekly release to be a little stressful in that? Like, you have a lot of work. You had all this work to do every single episode. Then you grind it out. You release the one episode. Then it's like, okay, now what's our next one? And you only have a week pretty much to get it done. Like, did you find it a little to be a bit of a grind to always get that one new idea and then one episode per week? I feel like I did. Yeah, that was so, there was so yeah. many episodes around, like, uh, I think episode 13 was kind of like the peak of that, the Silver mm-hmm. String Matushka. Oh, yeah. Especially, like, when you've kind of, like, gone through all the main articles, mm-hmm. but then your script is still at, like, four pages long, and you're like, this is going to be, like, a half-hour-long episode, and, like, we, I get to get this done by, like, cut out with banter. Yeah. And so, like, <laughs> yeah, and then it's and like, what if I can't be funny enough in the episode to give it some substance, and it's... <laughs> So you need like a, a decent script, right? Yeah, well, that's um, that's so pretty yeah, like, it is least popular episode. I mean, like I feel like if you have a deadline, then you're like, it's gonna be like a grind um, for the most part. Um, but having two weeks is nice because then it, we can kind of put more detail into like the research that we do. Yeah, that's how I have time to do all so, the work on the turkey episode. Yeah, because uh, if it wasn't for that, the episode would have been like 
25 minutes probably as opposed to 44 i think yeah because we wouldn't have had all of the detail that i was able to get about the stuff like i wouldn't have known where they were or exactly what they were doing how long are your scripts like for your full like your 44 minute episodes uh usually seven to 11 pages wow i mean it goes by quickly depending on like if we're just going to be like reading it or like we go on tangents and whatnot Mm. Like, a longest episode was an hour and one minute, I believe. Yeah, we usually do about, like, an hour-long episode. But that was the episode with the most material, because that was the Monaco episode, because we had the, oh, yeah. we had the like, 300-page book written by the guy who was accused of it. It depends, yeah, it also depends on, like, what content is available to talk about. Yeah, like, if there's a book, like, in the first couple of episodes, there were books available. I mean, the first one didn't have a book, but the second, second... The third case had a book. The Ireland oh yes, yes. The uh, second, third, and I believe the Monaco case are the only ones that we've had access to books for, because in a lot of instances, the main problem with going around the world is that there's a lot of languages mm. and a lot of books that are only written uh, that are written about those cases exclusively in those languages, mm-hmm. or the books that you can't find anywhere. Even if you could find them, they're in a different language, and the machine translation, well, capable is not good enough to provide exactly what we need. Wow, I mean, I admire you guys. Like, I applaud you guys for doing all that. Re- it seems like a lot of work is what I'm trying to say. And like, yeah, those first couple of weeks yeah. were, were bad. I was like trying to get through like a 400 page, like autobiography of like this oh, yeah. murderer, Jeez. this thief murderer. And it was like, he was talking about like every, every single crime he committed. And it was just an absolute, <laughs> Just trying to get, I think I managed to finish, I finished the book about an hour before we recorded, I think. Oh my God. I think some of the- It's above and beyond. I think some of the bigger true crime podcasts have like people who like do it like full time. Yeah, they have multiple research. Some of them have like two or three researchers on staff full time, whereas we're just two people. Yeah, it's a little harder when it's just a hobby. It's like, not really a hobby, it's more like, I don't know. It's like having a second yeah. job. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. unpaid. Finish, like I finish my job and yeah. then I'd go straight to doing that for the next couple hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know about you, Eric, but I could never do that. Like, if, uh, I, like research that much in depth, like a movie we're, we're mm. reviewing or a show. Like I'd be like, no, nope, this feels like a job. Yeah, it's tough to say. Like, for us, it's a little different. I do, like, I find it super interesting that you do this much research for your episodes and, like, write down, like, scripts and stuff. It it did like it sounds really like it does sound fun to be honest like I won't do that for our pod because it simply doesn't require it, but um, right. like it's something that's like a nice escape from work even though we're all the four of us unpaid doing this like it feels like it's fulfilling and um, I feel like it's worth it at the end of the day, but uh, it yeah, can be a lot like especially when you have to do like a dinner and all that like chores and stuff so it gets to be a long day helps, big time that. yep. <laughs> Oh yeah, it gives you an extra um, yeah. I feel like it's like I'm happy to say that I like am doing this and even if like we just like do our 80 episodes and that's it it's like hey I did that like yeah. well I'm hoping cool. we keep well the like, plan is we will keep going on after that yeah uh, although so. it will be quite a while to get there we're only at episode 23 at the moment we're working on 24 yeah, yeah. so it'll be at least later. another 112 weeks at least 112, maybe 114 weeks. So that's over two years. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it'll be two years until we get to that point if we keep up our current production yeah. rate. So I guess we'll see what happens. But, like, that is at least my goal. Yeah, we have, like, we have to get to the 80s. Nice. It's in the title. Yeah. No, I think Eric uh, are closing in on, on 100. And I'm like, I'm, yep. 100 is so long away, right, Eric? Like, what, like 26 weeks away? Yeah, but it'll be here before we know it. Not that we're already thinking about December because that's when it's going to be around yeah. there. But, uh, yeah, no, it passes by friggin' quick. Like I said, since Matt joined on, especially since COVID, at the start of COVID, we missed a few, like, every two weeks we'd drop an episode. But as of, like, summer 2020, we released an episode every two Mondays. And it is, like, I agree with you 100%, Julie. Like, it is something to be proud of to say, like, yeah, we're committed to this and we're still going and... Uh, we're going to hit 100, you'll hit 80, and then some. We're all going to just keep it going and uh, ride it out. 
Do you have any plans for once you hit 80, like just start again, like another go around the globe or still uh, time to process what that's going to look like? So I think, I mean, I personally would like, it'd be fun to do another 80, but do like a supernatural alien related Ooh, okay. episode. I like that. That's like what I'm personally really interested know, in, to be honest. I, like like, I love like I... alien UFO conspiracies. I find them so interesting. Um, I was more thinking that we were going to, we were at the at the eight point where we were going to launch a separate podcast that's kind of like a spin off series. So we keep the main series, but we have the spin off one as well. Okay. Like for the supernatural stuff? Yeah. Yeah. So we have yeah, to, I guess so. Yeah. So well, we have, that, that might be a lot of work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I, I Still got time to iron out the details on that. We need to hire someone. Yeah. Through the research that we've done, we have found a lot of interesting cases that we didn't get a chance to do because the country yeah, has multiple interesting true. cases. So we don't right. want those to go to waste, though. But it would probably just be, like, more leisure if we continued, because it's like, okay, we did the 80, so now it's like, we'll just, like, pick countries. Yeah, we'll like, pick, we, won't, we won't go around in, like, the organized state. pattern. So I guess we'll see what happens. We'll like, probably pick it more at random or something. Yeah. I like that. More casual, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because then also that way we don't end up stuck in Europe for 25, 20 episodes. Mm-hmm. Because we got to Europe, and then we went through all of the many countries of Europe. And now we've only just started getting out of Europe, and we're a quarter of the way through. Yeah. But I guess, like, we're going geographically, so... Yeah. That's why we're moving down to the Middle East and Africa soon. Mm. Nice. Well, I, I... I didn't have any more questions, Eric, if you... Yeah, I had one more thing, just like... One more? Um, about like, so you do your episodes, you release them. How do you go about like promoting your podcast? Is it strictly through like social media, Instagram, Twitter? Do you do like, cause we just started getting into like the videos, like we're uploading them on YouTube now. You into the video game. Um, we have an Instagram account and a Twitter account. But we have no but we, I, feel like, I feel like we don't promote the podcast as much as we should, to be honest. We, cause we, it's like, we're not very experienced in that concept of yeah. of like promotion or anything really we started working on a website but that's okay. been put on the back burner a bit <laughs> as i as i've been working on the website because i've got programming experience but things have got very heavy at work so i've kind of had to put that on the back burner for the time being but once the website's up that should hopefully help with the uh, whole search engine optimization thing yeah, nice. and we do generally uh when you search up certain like say the name of the murder and podcast we're generally one of the first options that shows up for most mm-hmm. of them we do have like this um well alex has this app that tells us like certain statistics about our podcast so it's like who's listening and from where and like how many downloads are we getting from like different platforms so like spotify or um stitcher i think is one of them yeah and then like apple podcasts as well okay so it's kind of interesting to like see like and like it kind of like we've gained like some followers okay, since we first posted. It's not like yeah, not have, a lot, uh, but <laughs> we are, the only follower count that I have is we have thirty eight followers on Spotify. Yeah, but it's like it's kind of interesting still because it's like we're not necessarily promoting it, but it's no, like it's growing organically. We don't yeah. know all of those people personally, so it's like it's kind of interesting to think that someone found your work online and was like, "I'm gonna, I like this." Yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. like. Um, like we've uh, been getting consistent downloads from say uh, probably about two or three consistent downloads of uh, an episode from Georgia in the States. Uh, there's a couple from California, a um, couple from Montreal. And um, I think there's a few people in the UK as well. And none of them would be my family because they don't live in those places. And my family don't acknowledge the podcast exists. Right. <laughs> so is it, it's, so it's all worth it. Like you made these people's lives better, right? You provided yeah. entertainment. Yeah, they're they're still them. listening to us after twenty, after twenty or so. Right? Right? That's awesome. That's great. 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 That's great. Nice. Well, yeah, no, that's all I had as well. Um, I think that'd be a good place to wrap it up. There it was like super fun to have you on, Julia and Alex. It was awesome to meet you. Um, can't wait to see what the next murders are going to be. And um, yeah, any final notes for the listeners? I guess check us out around the world um, at 80, oh my gosh, I don't even, around the world in 80 murders. Um, You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, 
Any, 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 any of those podcasts, podcasts except from Deezer. As well as on Instagram and Twitter around the world in 80 Murders. Um, thanks so much for having us on. Yeah, it's pl- been a pleasure to be here. It was a here. lot of fun, and I'm glad that we did it. Thank you for having us. Yeah, you guys were great. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, It was awesome. All right.